quest to find a new tail for Eeyore. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's familiar with Winnie the Pooh, mostly on behalf of nostalgia. Winnie the Pooh has been remembered since the 1960s for the cartoon rendition from Disney that was loosely based on a set of books by A.A. Milanay written back in the mid-1920s. It's sparked through many generations since then with many TV and movie spin-offs, and not to mention the major marketing product placements that it was used in. Admittedly, it was also a part of my childhood, but only to a minor degree. I wasn't as big on it as many other kids were, but nevertheless, I cherished it when I was 8 years old. So now there's a new release, strangely self-titled Winnie the Pooh, and with no further ado. Needless to say, it's what you would expect out of it. It's very sweet, innocent, and kid-friendly at its best. It's also a very stylish work of animation that's nice to see compared to most recent movies that are of CG and pop culture references. How is it not wonderful that Disney's going to the trouble of bringing us traditional animations once again? Well, that can't be said to the box office charts as it's close to bombing. That's depressing. Faithfully enough, the movie opens to a live-action shot of what's to be Christopher Robin's bedroom. We then get the classic book opening as we're introduced to our beloved toy characters Christopher Robin owns as we're set back in the Hundred Acre Wood. The Pooh himself, Eeyore, Rabbit, Owl, Piglet, Kanga, and Roo. Oh yes, and the Tigger too. The story centers on a couple of plot threads. One is Pooh's eager search for honey as his stomach growls and cries for hunger. Another is Eeyore's missing tail that everyone searches for, but also finding a replacement for his bum. And lastly, in the middle of the film, comes a misunderstanding to Christopher Robin's absence. The three are separate, and while they're all irrelevant plot points, they all add up very well and conclude some good lessons to kids, as it doesn't shove them down their throats. This movie's over an hour long, which is rare nowadays, even by children's standards for generations. Most children's movies are around an hour and a half, but to its pacing on storytelling, it doesn't get in the way. It feels longer, and I interpret that as a compliment, because the movie gets the story straightforward, and not stop for some random joke. It's calm, fun, innocent, and that's what's needed in its style. That's the other thing I want to point out, the style. This isn't just another return to traditional animation like The Princess and the Frog. The animation is purposely sketchy, like it was when it was first animated in the 60s. To contrast from current standards, though, there are some minor changes in the source material, specifically Christopher Robin. His eyes are originally dotted. Here, he has eyes, which I think is a better look for him because he's more expressive. Add to that, his thick British accent is adorable and I don't say that very often. This movie also includes some silly musical numbers. Simply what else would you expect from Disney? But I digress. The songs are decently written for what they are. They suit the style and give us some catchy beats and melodies with some of the silliest lyrics. But for some reason, they don't stand out to me too well like The Circle of Life, Friend Like Me, or Be Our Guest. I know it's an unfair comparison, but songs from The Princess and the Frog did the job, being just as memorable to me like Down in Orleans, Friends on the Other Side, and my personal favorite, Dig a Little Deeper. One of the Pooh's musical pieces aren't bad or anything, the main song itself is what only stands out to me simply because of nostalgia. This movie is overall everything you'd expect. It's innocent and heartwarming. But there's overall nothing wrong with being that in general. It's definitely worth seeing whether you have kids or not, even if it has a few hiccups. Yes, it's a movie specifically for kids, but what the hell hasn't been said already on that? I don't care what it's targeted for. It's a nice trip back in memory lane, and not just for the sake of it. I felt like a kid when I finished it, and I wished for that feeling to come back. See it while you have the chance, because it's not doing well at the box office as we speak, and it's only a matter of time before it's no longer playing. Winnie the Pooh is a wonderful film. I recommend it. So just a taste of a small lick, I should say. <laughs> Silly old bear. So To the final rating, 5 stars out of 5.